Let's go to Greece now, where emergency meetings overnight have cast doubt over the future of the country's leadership. And in fact, according to wire service reports we're getting in as we go to where, a unity government has just been agreed to between the government and the opposition. That deal will involve the expected resignation of the current Prime Minister George Papandreou. A new Prime Minister, according to these reports, will be named tonight, Australian time. The new coalition government will then agree to this EU debt deal and then hold elections shortly afterwards. So that is uh, literally news that is hot off the wires coming to us at the moment. Let's go now to Dr Oliver Mark Hartwich. He's a research fellow in the economics program of the Centre for Independent Studies. And he joins us now in Sydney. Good morning. Now, if these reports are true, and they very much seem to be, uh, is this good news for Greece as it tries to get itself out of this debt morass? Probably not good news for Greece because uh, Greece really didn't have a choice. Greece has now effectively been turned into an EU protectorate. Other people are calling the shots in Athens. It's uh, basically a country under control now by the Germans, the French, the EU Commission, the European Central Bank and whatever the Greeks are currently doing. They are really just taking commands given to them by other people. Now, one of the Greek newspapers had a blaring headline this morning saying haggling on the Titanic it basically amounts to that, doesn't it? It does, and actually it doesn't really solve the problem. That's uh, the main problem with all of these austerity measures. I mean, as much as I welcome uh, austerity measures and pro-market reforms in Greece, they won't help because in the end they will still be stuck with the euro currency, which is simply not the right currency for Greece. If Greece really wanted to recover its competitiveness, if it wanted to draw level, for example, with its neighbour Turkey, they would have to devalue by 40%. Now, you cannot have this kind of devaluation within the monetary union you can only try to achieve that with austerity measures. You can try it by internal devaluation, which is another word for cutting wages, cutting pensions, cutting prices. But that's really just a recipe for civil unrest. And I think in the long term, Greece will probably have to depart from the Eurozone. And based on the unpopularity of those various austerity measures, I mean, how achievable are they? Uh, probably not really. And um, you can actually see that Greek citizens are now cleverer than their politicians because they are transferring their money out of the country. According to some estimates, Greek citizens now hold 250 billion euros of assets outside Greece. And they have transferred all of these assets out of Greece because they fear and they expect that Greece in the not too far future will leave the Eurozone. So maybe the citizens know something that politicians don't. And actually, it's not just Greek citizens. Over the weekend, there were reports, for example, that a German tourism operator is now forcing its Greek partners, its hotel chains, for example, to offer uh, contractual clauses that will allow to, uh, to change the contracts with these hotels in case that Greece departs from the Eurozone. So its citizens, its businesses now all seeing what's going to happen in the next few weeks. And I think politicians are the last uh, people to see what's really uh, what needs to be done. How much should George Papandreou, who, uh, according to these reports, is about to leave the prime ministership, how much is he to blame for what's happening there? Not too much. I have great respect still for George Papandreou because he really tried the impossible. And um, you cannot just blame his government. His government really just came into power when the whole Greek uh, disaster was uh, revealed and when it was finally clear that all the statistics uh, were forged. But uh, the Greek problem precedes Papandreou's government uh, probably by 10, 20 or 30 years. So really, you, I have to have great respect for George Papandreou, but he's trying to fight an impossible task. Let's switch to Italy, where, of course, uh, the Italian government has agreed to the IMF coming in to monitor their own austerity measures. How much danger is that country in? Well, for Italy, I think what markets really want to see are further reforms. And uh, Italy is going to have another vote of confidence in uh, uh, Prime Minister Berlusconi on Tuesday. That's combined with a vote on new pro-growth reforms. But these reforms are probably still too timid. And the problem for Italy is not so much its budget deficit, which is around 4%. That's not too bad. And actually, um, Italy is also running a, a, a primary budget uh, surplus, which means that if you take the interest payments out of the budget, the public finances in Italy don't actually look too bad. What the real problem for Italy is at the moment is it's really a matter of confidence because markets have lost all confidence in Berlusconi. And as, I think as long as Berlusconi is um, at the uh, top of the Italian government, mm. you will not be able to restore market confidence in this country. In fact, there's a lot of speculation, as you'd be aware, over the weekend that Silvio Berlusconi perhaps won't be prime minister as early as tomorrow. That, that seems to be the way the Italian political scene is heading. Yes, but um, then again, these uh, speculations have been with us for at least a year now. And um, before the EU sum summit, if you remember, there were speculations that he had struck a deal with the uh, Northern League, his coalition partner, that uh, in return for the Northern League's approval to pension reforms, he would be gone and uh, call a snap election next year. 
I don't know how credible all of these reports are. One thing is clear, under Berlusconi, Italy won't recover. OK, just uh, as, we, as we're ending, Oliver Hartwich, this uh, deal uh, between the uh, Greek uh, government and the opposition, regardless of what happens to that country's membership of the Eurozone, do you believe that is enough in the short to medium term of stopping a contagion, a financial contagion throughout the rest of Europe? No, I don't think so, because in the end it doesn't really matter anymore what Greece does, because everybody's already talking about the other countries. We are talking about Italy. We shouldn't forget Portugal, because Portugal is a country mm. that's structurally quite similar to Greece. So I think this crisis is far from over. Oliver Markhart, which as always, thank you very much for your insights this morning. Thank you.